Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. A couple of months ago, I did a comparison between the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Sony a7R 3 I got some negative comments. People were somewhat confused or just didn't like the way I did it with my test procedures. So I thought I'd kind of explain it um, so I don't have to keep replying to all the comments. <laughs> and usually what happens when I get comments like this, it's usually because I didn't explain myself well enough or I didn't do it with enough passion or authority for them to understand where I was coming from and the reason why I was doing it that way. So basically with these two cameras, my theory, my idea was uh, I was gonna shoot this one in video mode and this one in standard creative style and compare the colors because the uh, manufacturer intended the colors to be basically. But I got a lot of negative comments and the fact that we're like, hey, you can't shoot the black magic that way because it's a, it's a Ferrari. It's so fast and it's got 12 bit and it's just a wonderful camera. It's got so much power. Whereas the Sony a7R 3 is an 8 bit camera. It's like a Toyota. I'm like, all right, I get that. But how do I do that fairly? If I were to shoot black magic in film and Sony and S log to make them on a level playing field. So they're both shot in a log format. How am I going to demonstrate this? In this example, I'm gonna to try to show you why I didn't do it with film or log. These are both shot with the Sony camera. Uh, I don't have the Blackmagic anymore. I don't even have that old footage anymore, but it doesn't matter because this is hopefully going to prove why I did it the way I did. So on the left, we have S-Log. On the right, we have Creative Style Standard. Um, so this is like 709 and this is like log. So one of the first things you're gonna probably do if I were to compare the Sony versus the black magic uh, in log formats on both of them they look totally different and they do i've seen them they look very different and you you say well you need to transform the this footage the log footage to look more like rec 79 then i could see the colors better though they're not as muted they're not as desaturated and i need to be able to see them fairly like i knew that would be like my biggest comments like how can you do that once you once you enter this log footage, you're gonna have to do something to it. And if Dave's gonna do something to it, then Dave's part of the equation. The first thing is, well, why don't you just put a LUT on it? All right, I'm in Resolve. I'm going to go down to LUTs and I'm gonna pick a LUT called Sony S-Log to Direct 709. Watch what happens. Oh, it's overexposed. Well, that doesn't look right. And sometimes you might uh, overexpose your footage two stops or almost two stops on this yes log to get the right uh, exposure later um, in terms of not having as much noise. So I'm just gonna reset the node. The next thing you might say for people that use Resolve a lot might say, well, just use the color space transform, which is just a mathematical. It's not a lot, it's just math. And I'm just gonna change the input gamma from the use timeline to S log two, because I only shot this in S log two. Uh, I did not shoot this in S log two S gamut. And so if I go down to uh, tone mapping, I create it simple, uh, or I use another luminance mapping, things are still not looking right. They're not matching up. It's desaturated, there's, you know, the contrast is not right. Um, so how do you compare colors again? I, you can't do it this way. The next thing you might say is, well, I have film convert. Why don't you just use film convert? Just Choose a camera like Sony, choose the closest camera you can get to it, and choose uh, the color profile, which is S-Log2 Pro maybe, or you expose it two stops or maybe a stop over and apply it. But wait, that doesn't look right. And then you're like, well, which film stock do you use? Well, <laughs> I don't want to use a film stock. So film convert's not helping me out here either. Next up, you might say, well, there's a program called Sony Catalyst. And why don't you just take the LUT from this program and apply it in Resolve so you can stay within the same program. Um, so what, that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go into LUTs and I'm just gonna find my folder called 3D LUT Creator and I just put it in here. It's Catalyst S-Log2 to 709. Well, that doesn't look right either. So just in conclusion, this is the fairest way I could come up with is shoot uh, this in video mode, shoot this in creative style standard mode. This is the way the camera manufacturer uh, intended the camera to look if you had a quick turnaround. If I would have done both of these in log, I would not be able to transform them into colors that you could actually see. Um, so that's the point I'm trying to get here is you put me into the equation, 
you're not going to get the results you're going to be wanting to match up. You're going to say, well, that's not totally fair. You used the wrong what? Or you graded it by hand wrong. Or you did this wrong. There's too many variables if I were to introduce myself into the equation. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you happen to own a Blackmagic Pocket camera and you have a Sony camera, let's say, why don't you do a test and upload it and do the comparisons that I've done? Uh, take the time and uh, show us show us your magic. Um, if you've got some professional color grading skills, I would love to learn from you. All right, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.